home prices are up. Well, at least for March. <laughs> They're up 0.5% March over February of this year. Now, guys, the way we look at things, we don't take any news as good news or bad news in and of itself. I shouldn't say any. However, Mo and I both are investors. Our job is to sit here, see the world around us, and decide what we're doing based on the world around us. Are we, are we trying to see where values may or may not go based on historicals? Absolutely. But we're not here to say what's going to happen in a month or two or six months or whenever anything's going to happen. Home prices have been very, very interesting. Yeah. Mo and I love doing this. We sit here, Mo, tell your anecdote about your story about your, about, about your house. Yeah, there's a, there's a home that sold down the street from me that, wa- that was listed for 800, sold for 825. And I was thinking in this market, things are still selling over ask. So it made me take my first in 14 hours in 14 hours. And it made me take a, th- a th- I was not selling my original home. And I told my parents, get out of the house. We're selling that house because we can get primo dollar for that right now. It is unbelievable what is happening. People are still bidding up houses. This is Lisa's interest rate that she got two years ago. I just saw this weekend, 7.14% is the current rate. It's almost triple, guys. Yeah. In a matter of two years. Two years, yeah. So your home is usually one of the, the biggest investment you're going to make. Now, obviously, hopefully you do a good job saving and dollar cost averaging. And when you retire someday, the home is not the biggest part of your assets. But at the end of the day, when you're in your 30s and you're buying a home for several hundred thousand dollars or more, that's a big investment. You're signing up for a big commitment. Yeah. Don't get sucked into worrying about the month to month changes in Correct. price. Correct. Do not worry about that. What you need to worry about is are you in a place you love? Do you want to live there for a long time? And do you believe that over long periods of time, your home value go up based on paying a reasonable price? Well, the question is what's a reasonable what's price? What's a reasonable price? Because I looked at it saying, um, the house that I'm going to be selling, my reasonable price isn't even close to what I'm going to be listing it at. Yeah. So what is reasonable? Well, it's funny because basically he's listing it for double what he paid for it four yeah. years ago. Correct. Hey, you put a few bucks into it. I did, but not, not, I didn't put double into it. No, you like did not. not. You put like 20% it. of its value into Correct. it. Guys, we made a video about a year, a year and a half ago about home prices. We said, listen, if inflation's high, you can really drive up home prices. Mm-hmm. That's definitely helped. But the second thing that's helped is inventory. So a, and if you no look at this supply. article, what was that? There's like no supply out there. That's the problem. So guys, remember, supply and demand. There's two parts. What I usually end up hearing is all about the demand side. You'll hear people say, go to cities that are growing like crazy. Well, what if also the inventory is going up by the same amount? Where are you seeing growth there? Mm-hmm. Think about it, guys. If, if a city has 10 houses and 10 people in it, and you all of a sudden, and it's going to grow to... 12, 12 people next year, that's 20% growth. But if you build 20 more houses, you're going to see real estate values fall. Right. At the end of the day, it's supply and demand. Mm-hmm. And this is the important aspect of what we're trying to teach on this website. It's not just about looking for one domino or one side of the coin. You need to look at both sides of the coin. You need to look at it from multiple angles. Because remember, no news in and of itself is good news or bad news. It's all about what angle you're looking at it from. Contrary to popular belief. <laughs> right. You know, some people sit there and say, recessions are awful. Okay, well, maybe, but some of the best businesses in history that employed millions, tens of millions of people came from recessions. Yeah. Recessions are awful. Stock markets fall. Well, yeah, but then you're able to put more money into cheaper stocks that are going to be around for a long period of time and help you hit your goals a little bit faster. It's all about that perspective. And that's new for you. I strongly encourage you to subscribe to the channel. If it's not new for you, you just like hearing it, subscribe anyhow. My goal here is to teach you guys a process of thinking. It's not to tell you to agree with me. It's not to tell you, now obviously, I like it when people agree with me, but at the end of the day, it's about applying a process to the way you look at things. So we look here. The overall index rate rose 0.5% in March. Now remember, it takes them some time to get through all the data. But the thing I want to go to right here, this is the overall home price index going back to 2019. But this is it by all the cities, all 20 cities. Now, Atlanta was big, 4.5. Charlotte was big, 4.7. Our hometown of Cleveland was 2%. Miami, but look at this. 7. What was that? Miami, 7.7. Oh, wow. Yeah. The Southeast did very well. But look, Vegas, LA, down 5%, down 3%. San Francisco, down 11%. Seattle, down 12%. These are the places that grew exponentially. And this is what we talk about when we talk about any investment. 
the fastest growing, the ones that grow the most irrationally will be the ones that pull back when times get a little bit tough. Yep. Right? Yep. I'm not in these markets. I don't see what these listings. There could be a great story behind this. And I guarantee you, if you ask a realtor in any one of these towns, they're going to have an exact good reason why this happened. Okay. I don't know why it happened, but the point is these things happen in the crazy markets. Now, am I telling you don't buy in those markets? No, of course not. I will tell you one thing though, California instituting that tax on homes, homes that are 15 million or something. No, I think it's 5 million, over 5 million, four or 5 million, which might sit there and say, well, that's not me. Yeah. But I see homes in the hood going for like half a million bucks. Yeah. I don't get it. I know a girl who bought a home in, um, over in Oakland for 950,000. And I was looking at that thing like 950,000. That was terrible. It's in like in the ghetto. Yeah. And that's the way prices are over there. Yeah. Is that okay? Sure. I mean, it's fine. You got to live somewhere. I get that. But we also look at the rent, the, the income to home price ratio. Mm -hmm. And in these cities, it's like double digits. That means like if you make 200,000 a year or the average home price is a million bucks, that means the average income is like a hundred thousand. That's a big ratio. In the place where we live, Akron, Cleveland, Ohio, yeah, it's not sexy. I get that. But I look at this going, hey, that non-sexy market, Mo's already doubled his money on his house. Actually, more than double his money because he had a mortgage. Oh. Guys, at the end of the day, you have to make a decision for yourself when where you live. And if your family's out there, you love the weather, but then you got to realize you're going to be house poor probably. And that's okay if you're fine with that. But it's very hard for people to do. Mm -hmm. I look at these home prices and I think to myself, okay, What's the long term of this? I mean, this is, look at COVID, by the way, Mo. They just I went know. up. They just went up during COVID. I know. <laughs> Recession. Sounds uh, good. I know. In 2019, home price index was a little over 200. Now it's going back to 300. That's about a 40% increase in the last four years. Yeah. Guys, a 40% increase in the last four years. Should I repeat that again? Yeah. A 40% increase in the last four years. That's 8 to 10% increase for the nation. For this 20 city index, for the nation, that's incredible. Yeah. Go ahead, Mo. So what brings it back down? Is it increasing? Well, first of all, what will increase supply? I have to think that a big piece of it is when interest rates start to come down because people are more comfortable moving and not, because I have a friend right now, he's paying 2.625, same as Lisa. But he's like, do I really want to go and buy another home right now and sign up for a 7% interest rate? And he's like, no, I'm just going to stay put. Maybe that's going to be some type of catalyst that brings things down. But I know a lot of home builders are doing well selling homes. Yeah. And a lot of new homes are selling very, very quickly. People want move-in ready if they're going to move. Yeah. That's it. There's like, listen, if I'm going to go pay the 7%, I might as well I get it out there. I might as well there. just move in and be happy day one. Guys, we saw a big drop in mortgage rates very, very quickly after COVID. Mm -hmm. It made, I remember when I found my first mortgage in 2003, I got 5%. I was like, yeah, I'm never going to see that again. Boy, was I wrong. I don't yeah. think I ever saw above 5% yeah. after that. Right. And that's the point about trying to time things. We don't know. Right. That's 20 years ago. June of 2003, I bought my first home. Right out of college, I paid 115 grand. I got 5%. I was so ecstatic going, that's such a low, low rate. And now on my new house that I'm doing, I got 4.25 locked a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm ecstatic about that yeah. because of how high home prices have gone now. Right. A little over a year ago, I locked that rate in. Guys, we don't know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. If you have a home that you love, that you can be in for a long time, and you have a low mortgage rate, count your blessings. Yep, keep it. As time goes on, as your income goes up, you'll be able to afford more homes, and 7% won't matter as much to you. And by the way, 7% may not be here to stay. This could be a temporary blip. Yeah. We don't know. The point is, when you move, make sure it's a move you have to make, because you either need more space or you have to change jobs in a different city, something like that. Enjoy the house you live in. Really, really enjoy that, but be ready for higher rates in the future. What I would do if I were you, calculate what your mortgage would be today on your current home if you had to buy it today. If you had to buy it today, what would your mortgage be? Go look at on Zillow, what's the value of your home? Put 20% put down payment, do a 30-year mortgage at 7%, what would your home rate be? You might get six and a half. I don't know what the exact rate in your area is, Figure that out and then have that in your head going, okay, if, that's, if my mortgage went up, because I do leases. My fiance has a house we live in currently while we wait for our other house to finish. Her mortgage with tax insurance and everything is about 2000 a month. If we had to buy that home today, it's every bit of 3200 or 3300 a month. Wow. She jokes and she goes, oh my God, how lucky did I get? I'm like, yeah, you literally got the bottom of the market. Yeah. She got so lucky on those mortgage rates. Yep. It is what it is.
That's why we're never selling her house. When we move, that's becoming a rental for her, for her investment. And I encourage people to think about that. Don't, don't, I'm not telling you necessarily to become a landlord, but man, if you can lock that rate in and keep it, why not? Yep. Yep. Go make that money because rents are going up. Everything's going up. This is a stat I saw on Twitter the other day. Number of realtors in the U.S. Guys, is it ironic that during the real estate boom, it skyrocketed during the real estate bust that went down? We now have 1.54 million realtors when right before the boom, we were under 1.4 million back in 2006, 7, and 8. Now, take this for what it is worth. Again, we look at this data and say, okay, what does this mean? Well, it makes sense that during the dot-com boom, how many people were becoming stockbrokers? Yeah. Whenever things are very frothy, things like that happen. It doesn't mean home price have to fall. The most common question I get is, Paul, when's the real estate crash going to happen? One, no idea if it does happen at all. And two, and if it does happen, I have no idea when. I truly don't believe there'll be a real estate crash like we had before. Maybe it does happen. We're already down 12%. Those markets saw 50, 60, 70% drops. But I will say this. I know if I, there's, everybody has their anecdotal stories, but I was recently on a call with somebody who bought a house for 425,000 in Miami in 2007, and they were selling it for 375 just a year and a half, two years ago. 16 years, if you told somebody in that peak market that their house was gonna go down in value over the next 15, 16 years in a city like Miami, Florida, a booming market, tons of people moving there, would they have ever believed that? They thought you're crazy. Again, it's not to say the same thing's gonna happen. But when I see the ratios of what it costs to buy, and I see the issues in San Francisco, I see the crime that's happening. I was a victim of that crime when I went to San Francisco last year. When I see all the stores closing because of all the crime, you have to sit there and say, what's going to cause people to move there? What's going to happen there? At some point, though, when you have less supply, if all of a sudden everybody in the country, nobody sold their homes. All of a sudden, the people have to move to buy a home. They're going to pay through the nose to get those homes. Yeah. Supply and demand. It's not just demand. It's not just supply. It's both. Yeah. I mean, I was telling you, I think in our previous video uh, on real estate, I talked about this. The normal supply in Naples, Florida, on average, is about 6,000 homes for sale. Now it's about 3,000. And it got as low as about 600. Wow. At one point. Yeah. So right now it's at 3,000. So it's half of what it normally is. But that reflects in what we're seeing in prices in Naples. And that's the Tampa market there we of... Go. That's the Tampa market of Florida. Essentially, Naples is right next to Tampa. Yep. And up 5%. And a couple hours from Miami is up 7.7. .7. So there you go. So overall, in the last year, the, the overall composite 120 houses, 20 markets is down 1.1%. And there are some that are doing better. Suck it to everyone who shits on Cleveland. They're up 2%. <laughs> you know, it's not like Chicago or Charlotte. Where's Detroit? Detroit's up 1.2%. Good for Detroit. Right here. I like the Midwest towns. Is Pittsburgh on this list? They are not. Interesting. But look at Atlanta coming in hot at 4.5%. Mm -hmm. Hot Atlanta for a reason, right? That's a big number. Second highest? Is that the second highest? Charlotte's number one? Oh, no. Miami, Miami's 7.7. 7. Yeah. Welcome to my... I hope she didn't sell her house. Maybe she could get more... Maybe she can get her money back. You should text her. I should text her. <laughs> Guys, this is pretty... Pretty fun things to think about. It's just fun to sit there. I'd still want you to keep it simple. At the end of the day, income is going to drive home prices in the long run. Home prices can't go up faster than incomes go up. Think about that overall. Just think about that logically. Let's say hypothetically incomes went up 4% a year and home prices went up 10% a year. At some point, it's just not going to work, right? If you go 20 years from now, if the average home is 400,000, but it goes up 10% a year, it's going to be 2.7 million. If your income goes up uh, 5% a year for 20 years and you make 100, you're going to make 265,000. It's going to be a 10 to 1 ratio versus a, at some point, you've just got to realize that income and real estate prices are probably going to go in the long run in tandem. Now, some markets though could have different income differences. Absolutely. Income price, incomes could go up and down or fluctuate ba growth rates based on the certain market, but that's what really is going to drive it. That's the, that's the demand side. The supply side is going to be based on basically home builders and people who want to sell their homes. If every single person in Cleveland put their house for sale tomorrow, guess what would happen to home prices in Cleveland? Plummet. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I've been being yeah. hypothetical. Yeah. But these are the things we want you to think about. So guys, if you like this way of thinking, if you like the fact that it's not as simple as just, oh, if a lot of people are moving there, great. Usually the simple answer is right. But there's two sides to every coin. And that's what I want you to remember. Subscribe to the channel. 
You'll become smarter financially just from doing that. Watch our videos. Some of our videos are a little more complicated, but we start in basic form and build up from there. So just stick with us. I guarantee you'll get better at this. Thanks a lot. Take care.